Hello friends, welcome to the .NET Awesome YouTube channel. Previously, we have seen many articles about WebGrid in ASP.NET MVC application, like how to display database data in WebGrid, how to dynamically set row background color in a WebGrid depending on the content, implementing custom paging, sorting and filtering in ASP.NET MVC WebGrid, implementing basic crude operation in WebGrid and many more. Today in this article, I'm going to show you how to implement basic in-place editing in ASP.NET MVC WebGrid. Most of the developers familiar with the term inline editing in WebGrid. But what is in-place editing? In-place edit allows the user to edit text directly in the page without requiring going to a separate page or open a model pop-up. It makes the interaction more direct and intuitive as the user can edit the text in the same place where it is shown. So what we will do here in this tutorial, we will create an ASP.NET MVC application where first of all we will show list of data in a web grid and then we will make each cell of the web grid editable when user will click on the cell. So user can edit the cell value and submit to the server for update on the database okay let's start implementing basic in place editing in asp.net mbc web grid so first of all we have to create an asp.net mbc application and for this here i have used visual studio 2017 so for creating a new project go to the file new and then click on the project menu from here, I will select ASP.NET web application under web and then we have to enter our application name here. So here, inline editing web grid, okay. And then we have to select the location where I want to save the project. Here I have selected the location where I want to save the projects, okay and then click on ok button it will appear one another dialog window from here i will select empty but here i will select mbc for add folder and co-references for okay so this is okay uh, i will click on ok button for create the project it will take few seconds and here we go our project is created we can see here in the solution explorer now in the second step i will create one local database here in our application so we can fetch data from database and show in web grid where we will make this web grid editable as this is a tutorial project i will add a database in our application here in the app data folder okay so for adding the new database just right click on this app folder from your solution explorer and then click on add and then click on new item from here we will select sql server database under data and then we have to enter our database name here in my case i have given my database okay and then click on add button so it will add one local database here in this application you can see this is added now we will open this database here in our server explorer so double click on this now we will create our database table here in this database so we can do crude operation on this database table and for creating the table just right click on this tables node and then click on add new table okay so here we can write the table schema so here user okay let me give uh, the name site users okay i will make this identity the id column let me add few columns here first name worker 50 last name Okay, 50. 
and now I will add one more column date of birth which will be date time and not null allow and another one is role id okay and this is integer type and mandatory value so this is done for this table and i have to add one more table here for say this role information like role id or name okay so first let me update this script so it will generate one table name site users so i will click here on this update and then i need to click again this update database button for generate the table you can see it successfully generated if i refresh it will show here let me create one another table for save this role information I will give table name user roles. Okay, name ID and identity column role name worker fifty. Okay. I'll make this column unique column. So this is done. Now again I need to click this update button for generate this table. Okay, and then click on update database. You can see it's generated. If I refresh again, it will show these two tables. Now let me add some dummy data here so we can so this information in a web grid where we will make each cell of the web grid editable so first of all i will add some roles like user admin okay like this and then in the site user i will add some user information sort of Role ID is one. Sorry. Should be nineteen eighty eight. Okay. And sorry. So this is done. Okay. So what we have done here, we have created two tables. One is user roles for save user role information. Another one is site user for store some user information. So this is done. And now in the next step, I will add entity data model in our project. Okay. So here go to your solution explorer for adding entity data model. I will add our data model here in this models folder. So from solution explorer, right click on this models folder and then go to add and then click on new item. From here, I will select edu.net data entity, entity data model from data and now we have to provide the model name so here in my case i have entered my model and then click on add button from here i will select ef designer from database because i'm going to create a database first model so i'm going to click on next button from here i will select my database which is 
we have just created in the previous step in a app data folder we have created my database so i will select this one and then i will click next button yes i want to go with entity framework 6.x so click on next button and from here i will select both tables for generate the data model and then click on finish button you can see here our data model is generated successfully now i will add a view model in our application view model is nothing but a class we will use here for send data from controller to view and for this i will add a folder here first in our application so go to your solution explorer right click on your project name and then go to add and click on the new folder and i will rename this folder as view model okay and then let's add a class file here in this view model folder so what i will do for the class file right click on this folder name add and from here we can click class for generate a new class and now we have to enter the class name here so here site user model okay and then click on add button you can see here one class file is generated now i need to add some fields here which we want to see in the web grid okay so let's add one by one so first of all i need id and then i want to show first name and then last name date time date of birth role id and finally i will add one more here role name okay so this is done now we can use this class for transfer data from more controller to view okay so so before this we need to add one controller as well here in our application so what i will do here i will add one controller right click on your controllers folder from your application to add a new controller and then, then click on controller from here i will select mbc5 controller empty and then click on add button i will rename this as home controller okay and then click on add button you can see here our controller is created successfully now i will add some code here in this index action for fetch data from database and show in a web grid so i need to send list of user data from this index action to view so and for this what i will do here i will fetch data from database so i need to use this entity context my database entities let's see equals to new sorry and now i will write one link you query for which all the site users data mtc dot site users and then i will join with user roles for page the role name okay and then select new here i'm going to use the view model what we have created in the previous step site user model okay and then i have to 
plus one ID is equal to eight dot ID first name plus eight dot first name p dot roll name okay so this is done let me declare one variable here list of site user model okay this list we will return from here in this controller to view okay and for this here i need to assign this list to list okay so this action is done what we have done here we have added few lines of code here for fetch data from database and then here from this action we return this list of site user model to the view okay now i need to add a view for this action for showing this site user model data in a page okay where we will implement the in place editing so let's add the view for this action and for adding the view for this action what i will do here i will right click inside this action and then click on add view here everything is fine the name is okay from here i will select empty and from this model class what i will select is site user model okay and this too is okay I, I need this script library reference and also i want to use the layout page so this too is okay and then click on add button you can see here our view is generated here for this act index action of this home controller but here uh, as you know we have sent list of site user model so i need to change this one to list okay so this is done let me add title of this page in place editing in web grid So here first of all I will show data in a web grid and then we will make each cell of the web grid editable ok. So let us start writing HTML code for show data in a web grid. So let me first take your one web grid here, grid equals to new web grid and the source will be model rows per page i want 10 records okay so this is done now i will generate this web grid html here for show data in a web grid but before this let me add one d with row css class for make it looks perfect because here i'm going i'm using bootstrap okay so this is the bootstrap class so don't worry with this let me get the html from this web grid sorry 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 get get html and then here i will add table style i will add some bootstrap css class here for make this web grid looks perfect table responsive table stripe table bordered okay this is some css class i have added here for make the, the generated html is looks perfect and then 
I need to add columns property the dot columns and then here I will add columns one by one what we need to show here so uh, in our first column I will show first name okay and then I will use format function for uh, at our custom HTML so I this is required to add some custom HTML here using which we will make the sale of this web grid editable okay so here I'm going to add one new div in this grid I will add one more CSS class which is edit this CSS class will use for make this column editable so we will see this later and in this in this div I will show first name and few data attribute we will add here so this data attributes we need when we will make this cell editable okay so I'm just going to add data attribute data ID here item dot id and one more data property i will add here which is property name okay where i will sorry i just need to add the column name this one this two is required when we will make this cell editable okay this is for first name column so let me add copy this one for do the same for the last name okay your last name here i will change this to last name and i want to show here last name okay so this two is done let's do the same thing for show the role name also here so this should be role here I will change this edit to edit select I have changed this class name here to edit select this this is because here in this case for this role column I will show one drop down when it will be in editable mode okay so this is the selector for this uh, we will use this later let me finish this for now this should be role id this is the property name actually and here it should be role name as we have if you can see here in this view model we have role name property for show the role name here okay so this is also done and again i need to show one more column here so i will copy this one and paste it here and here the header name will be dob date of birth and edit here i will change the css class name to edit date so when anyone will click on this cell we will show one date time picker control for select the date so here it will be DOB and here I will change this to DOB but I also want to format this one so let me add string dot format and inside this format I want actually this DD MMM YYYY okay this format so this column is also done so what we have done here till now uh, we have added one view for this index action and here in this view 
we have used webgrid for show data in a web page okay so this is ready and one more thing i will do here i will add one style class i will make each column same size for make it looks perfect so here i will add width equal to 25 percent okay so this is done let's run this application and see how it looks like till now so you can see uh, all the information is showing here in this web grid now what we will do when anyone will click on this any cell we will make this cell editable uh, this is the first part of this tutorial so here we have uh, implement for these two column first name and last name so when user will click on this cell here we will generate one input control for update this value and uh, when user will click the enter button after change the value this value will be updated to the database as well okay so let's start implementing and uh, in the second part of this tutorial we will make these two field where we will show some advanced control like when user will click on this role cell here we will show one drop down with all the available rules so user can select the appropriate role and then click on ok button to update it to the server similarly here in this date of birth column we will show one date time picker control so user can select the appropriate date and submit to the server for update on the database okay so let's implement each cell of this first two column editable here in this part one tutorial and uh, later uh, in the second part of this tutorial we'll make this other two column editable okay So for making this uh, web grid sales editable here in this tutorial I'm going to use J editable jQuery plugin okay and for this we need to go here J editable if you search this one you can see uh, I will go with this this one here this one uh, we are going to use j editable okay this is one jquery plugin for in place editing okay uh, you can see here the github link is also available and you can directly use this source from the site as well this url you can use or if you want you can download all the source code available here also in github if you see there i will give this link in our video description so you can get all the required files from this github okay if you go down a little you can see here all the documentation is also available for the basic users okay so if you uh, have any doubt you can uh, go to this link and see all the documentation how to use it okay so let's implement this j editable jquery plugin in our application for make each cell of the web grid editable i'm going to use this link for now so i'm just i will copy this one and here we will add this script so see this link but before adding this script reference here in the page I need to add a script render section here just after the jQuery library okay so here I'm going to add one render section and I will give name scripts and the required should be false means this is not mandatory so this render section allow us to place some content here just exactly in a place where the render section is defined from view 
and in this way we can exactly render all the uh, script reference in proper order okay so here i just go to copy this one because here i will use this section scripts and inside this section i will cut this one and paste it here so it will render here after just after the jquery library so it will work properly okay so this is done and now here i will add some jquery code for use this jquery dot j editable library and make each cell of the web grid editable okay so for making this each cell of the web grid editable i'm going to use this jquery library jquery j editable library okay so first of all i need to define one variable old value if there is any issue submitting value i will revert the cell with the previous value so this is the reason i'm adding one variable here then for make each cell of the web grid editable here i need to use the selector here i'm going to use this css class edit this two column will make edit that's the reason i'm using this one and then editable sorry spelling mistake editable this function we will call from this j editable library for make this two column cell editable this first name and the last name column okay and here in this function we have to pass the url where it will submit the data when user will press enter key okay so here save user this section we will create so here we will submit the data and then we can also pass some extra parameter like css class it will add this class to the form when user will click on the cell it will generate one form and this css class will be applied to the form okay and we can also define tooltip so user can understand uh, the user will mouse over on the cell uh, that the cell is editable click to edit me okay like this and we can define width of the cell when it will be editable to none so it will automatically calculate width and height okay we can write on submit method for manage something if you want before submitting data function here you will get the settings and original value original value means before edit okay here we will store old value here in this variable what we have defined and we will get this from this variable original dot rt this way we can store the previous value before edit okay and we can also define submit data this function is useful for submit some additional data also so what we will do here we will submit the user id and also the property name for which this data is submitted for 
okay so id this dot data and then here we will use this id what we have defined here okay so this way we will get the id and also we have to pass property name so we can understand which record and which field we have to update in our database okay so this way we can return some data from this submit data function and this submit data function is useful for send some additional data to the server okay and after this we will use one more function here which is callback this function is useful do the necessary changes after submit the data and get back the submitted result okay actually so this callback value return to variable one is the value updated value which is updated and also the settings Here one thing we need to do as uh, jQuery J editable plugin only allow to accept string value from the server. So here we, we have to pass string value from server side and then here after getting the data we will convert it to JSON because it's not allowed to passing JSON data from server side. Okay. So if we pass any string value then we have to parse it to json okay so in this way we will get back the json data from the string value we can use this parse json for convert it okay and now i will check if json data dot status is true that means we have successfully updated the value on the database so we will replace the existing value of the cell with this new updated value what i will get this from here json data dot value this property we will send back from server server side data okay and if it is failed to update then what we will do here we will revert back to the original value what we have already stored here in old value so i'm just updating this one to old value okay what we have done till now here we are going to use the editable function from this jquery editable where we have to pass the server side url where submit uh, data will be submit after change and then you can see here on submit method this is the met function which will be called before submitting data to the server and submit data is useful function for send additional data to the server and this is this callback method will be execute when we will submit data to the server and get back result from the server and according to this status we will update the cell value okay we are almost done just one step away completing this tutorial we have to create this save user action in home controller for handle the data and update the data what is updated by user okay so go back to your home controller here i will add one more action and with http post method public action result and the action name should be save user what is defined here you can see in the jquery code so this one and here we will add three property one is id to understand which record we need to update and then property name to understand which
column we need to update and the value the updated value so let's add one variable here for status and one another variable for message if we need anything to show to user and update data to the database and from here we will return some data so here were response equals to i'm going to create an anonymous object with this properties value equals to value status equals to status and message equals to message and uh, this anonymous object i will convert to json string as the j editable jquery plugin is only accepting string value okay so we need to convert this json uh, this anonymous object to json string and for this i have to add newton shop json package from nuget okay so go back to your solution explorer right click on your project name and then click on manage nuget packages from here i will search for newton json you can see this is already uh, sh shown here so i'll select this and click on install button it will take few seconds okay this is successfully installed now go back to the home controller again for convert this to json result here I need one J object and this is from newton.json from link u o equals to J object dot from object and here is a response object and then return content O dot to string okay this is done here I need to update value to the database okay so first of all I have to create an object of our data context model here my database entities and then let's find the user dc dot site users dot find with this id we can find the user and then and then we will update the value if we found the user so if user not equals to null here we will do one thing is dc dot entry here is a uh, our entry and then dot property then we have to provide the property name what we want to update property name dot current value equals to value okay and then we will call dc dot save changes for update the value to the server and if it's successfully done then status will be true okay and if we didn't find the user we will show error message okay so this action is done so we are ready to run this application for check everything is working fine or not so click on this run button or on this application You can see everything is showing fine now let's click on this cell sort of okay you can see it's uh, automatically converted to editable form and it's showing one input control for update the value let's update this value and if i click enter you can see that value is updated if i now refresh the page you can see the value is updated to the database as well because it's showing here 
after refresh the page as well okay but this is strong because it's a first name i'm going to update this one again and here let me update this one to can and see this value is also updated if i change this to m okay this is working perfectly fine wrong okay so this is working perfectly fine let's see in the database as well once if uh, everything is working fine or not this other two will see in the next part of this tutorial so but before this let's verify all the data is updated to the database as well or not for confirm that everything is working perfectly fine or not so this is our database i'm going to open this one and here show user data you can see this name is changed model to m and this is also changed that means everything is working perfectly fine okay thanks for watching please don't forget to like comment and subscribe and view the next part of this tutorial where we will implement in place editing in web grid with some advanced control like drop down and date time picker thanks have a nice day